Has our inimitable Miss Thornton been in at all while I was away? McCord asked casually. No, not once. Was he imagining things, or did Calderwood sound miffed that Amy hadn't been in to see him? Well, judging by past experience, the next murder will send her hurrying into the station, McCord said. Now, tell me what's been happening. How did you get on with the D.I. who covered for me? She was fine. McCord grinned. Of course she was. No woman can resist your upper-class charm, and even if she could, she would not mess with the son of a high court judge. Calderwood rolled his eyes. Oh, how I missed your banter, sir. Yes, she was just great. If I'd had a D.I. like her in Glasgow, I would still be there. That reminds me, McCord said, grinning. There was a guy on the course I was on who used to work with you. Frankie, somebody. He remembers you fondly. Calderwood's handsome face contorted. Frank Sinclair, he spat. He was one of those who made my life a misery there. Whenever there was a call out, he'd say, you'd better let us deal with it. Glasgow is a tough place to work for a pretty posh boy. Or something to that effect. Well, he commiserated me on having to work with you. I think he used the words overprivileged wet rag. Seeing Calderwood turn crimson, McCord lifted his hands. His words, not mine. If you ask me, he is only jealous, ugly peasant that he is. Calderwood could not help but smile. And what did you say? I said that for a pretty posh boy, you were shaping up to be quite a decent detective. While they were working through the slowly diminishing piles of paperwork, Calderwood laughed at some of McCord's anecdotes of the superintendent making his life a misery. But, McCord said, you are still Gilchrist's golden boy, so you have nothing to fear when the next body turns up. Right on cue, the office telephone rang, and McCord picked up the receiver. After listening intently to the message, he thanked the caller and hung up. He turned to Calderwood, a mixture of excitement and intrigue lighting up his face. A body at Waverley on the Gala Shields train, he said. Let's go. In a swift, synchronised movement, both men grabbed their coats and made for the door. McCord smiled. It was good to be back.